I am getting a 22, almost 23 second duration on my actual chem cloud. So there's a couple things in this video I want to go over, but before that, I do want to talk about the artificer hive, or as some people are telling me, the artificer or the artificer, you know, I guess if you're old English, sure, you say artificer. I'm sure if you're French, you say artificier, but I say artificer because artifice is pronounced artifice, and then you add an R on the end, it's artificer. But anyway, a couple days ago, I did release a poll asking people what skill refresh did. And to my shock, about 70% of people pretty much either had no idea or were wrong. Maybe some people just don't care. I mean, it's possible there's a lot of DPS users who never touch the artificer and it doesn't matter. But for everyone who does care, you know, if you look at the bottom stats of the artificer, you've got buff amount, buff duration, skill repair, and skill refresh. Buff duration and skill refresh seem to be the point of contention for a lot of players. All right. Buff duration is how long that buff on the artificer actually lasts, or how long it lasts on the other skill that it actually hits, right? Skill refresh is how much time it actually adds back to already deployed skills. So if you look here with my defender drone, as soon as I pop out the defender drone, I'm going to get a tick from my artificer hive. It is going to stay on the, the drone for 10 seconds. Now, as soon as that buff ends, it is going to trigger the artificer to again send out another drone to buff the defender drone. Now, regardless of what you do, regardless of what stats you have, skill duration, skill tier, it doesn't matter. It's not going to change the duration of this buff. Now, if you look at the HUD right below my health, you can also see that there's an orange bar there that indicates how long or how much activity my Defender drone actually has left, right? Whenever it gets hit by one of these drones, it is going to increase that orange bar. That is the skill refresh. It is adding 15 seconds to the life of this drone, meaning that if I have a tier six uh, skill build with a defender drone, I can keep the defender drone up pretty much forever. Now, there are a couple issues with this that may confuse some players, and this is what I wanna go over. You can see right here that when I pop out the flame turret right next to it, right, the artificer just buffs it almost uh, instantaneously. It basically just goes right from my backpack to the actual skill. But you can see that the orange bar on my HUD is actually draining because the, the flame tour is actually shooting out the fire. The artificer buff has ended, right? I'm going to get closer to it. You can hear right here that the actual buff or the actual artificer has shot out another hive. But because I was further away from it, it doesn't hit it immediately, right? You can actually see that it starts to come into the screen right there. And what this means is a lot of the time there's actually a travel delay. So if your skill is further away from the hive, the longer this delay is going to be, which might mean that some people are seeing it as it taking longer for the actual hive to uh, refresh a skill, which isn't true. The other thing is some skills have a really, really long duration. And in the case of the flame turret or incinerator turret, it actually has two durations. The one is its base standard duration, which is like uh, 180 seconds, just like all the other turrets. And the other duration is its active duration. So when it's actually shooting out the flames, when it's doing that, it actually uses its duration by about like 10 times more. So it really, really does not benefit from the skill refresh. And that's because it's using like 10 seconds of duration in one second, which means that your, your buff for 15 seconds of duration isn't going to mean much. And so sometimes for some skills, the skill refresh isn't that important. Now, the main topic of this video is actually three different things. The first one is going to be Acosta's Go Bag. One of the exotics that I think tends to get the least amount of love, and I actually kind of don't like it, just because I'm not really a fan of the overcharge mechanic in the game, just in general. I mean, sometimes it has good uses, but in general, I don't like it. The second part is going to be the Oxidizer Chem Launcher. Obviously a good skill, but not as good as it was when the game came out. And then the third topic is going to be skill duration. Now there's only a few actual sources of skill duration in the game, but again, it was definitely better when the game originally came out. Now I'm not a stranger to oxidizer, overcharge, skill duration. I actually released a video about this when Warlords of New York came out. It's probably one of the first builds that I've released for Woni. You can see here my shade is only 180, right? The oxidizer chem launcher, when you overcharge it, can be absolutely amazing. And it's even one of the best ways to just wipe out the hunters on floor 100 of Summit, you know, just really quickly with a four-man team. It can do amazing things. But in the grand scheme of things, it's one of those skills that really requires you to actually want to use it because it can be a little bit annoying and kind of uncomfortable to try to use it. But for this video, I actually went back and kind of updated that build, just kind of tweaked some things, made it a little bit different to actually focus more on what I like about the Oxidizer than 
anything else, right? I am using the capacitor just because that gives me more weapon damage for the skill tiers, and it also buffs the oxidizer a little bit. I am using the M1A with Future Perfect, because obviously Future Perfect is another way to allow me to have overcharge when I get a kill, which is kind of rare with a low DPS build, but it can happen. I am using a card custom. It does have in sync, not really that that matters, but you know, in sync, perfect in sync, um, future perfect, future perfection, um, spike or perfect spike. Those are all great talents, you know, on, on your weapons. You, you can use any of those, you know, whatever you want. That'll give you a large amount of damage for your oxidizer if that's really your goal. You could even use the blue screen if you wanted to, just to kind of like disorient the enemies while they're actually in the oxidizer. You know, you're going to end up using that skill to actually, you know, disorient them so it works, right? Now my mask is going to be a chill out mask, and that's just because I can put two skill duration mods on there. Now moving into my chest piece, I am using a Marikami, and that is for that one piece of skill duration. And this one, it's got repair skills on it, but I didn't really feel like uh, trying to find a... a skill damage version of this of this backpack so obviously i could have changed repair skills to damage but i chose overwatch just i wanted to have that for more of a team build and of course it's got a skill duration mod on it my holster is my first piece of alp summit and of course obviously with the two piece i get again 20 percent skill duration and it's rolled in skill damage and skill haste my gloves are my second piece of alps obviously skill damage skill haste and my knee pads are going to be improvised so that I get that mod slot for an extra skill duration mod. And then of course my backpack, Akasa's Go Bag with skill duration mod. Now the reason that I like the Oxidizer, it's not because it's a high damage, you know, super offensive skill that is just amazing in combat. No, in most uses, it's pretty unimpressive, especially if you're dealing with wave after wave of enemies and they are constantly running away from your actual clouds, right? The reason I like it is because it destroys a lot of the projectiles or explosives of the enemies extremely effectively. So whether it's a heavy, you know, launching grenades at you, whether it's a, a hyena sending those stupid remote control cars after you, or especially those suicide bomb drones from the Black Tusk or White Tusk. Obviously, having these clouds that just destroy all of these incoming explosives is amazing, especially on Legendary. It can be very helpful depending on what your team makeup is. Now, as far as duration goes, I think this is one of those stats that has really been just ignored in the game. I, I think it no longer has the appropriate amount of, of power that it did when the game first launched. We can still see here that I am getting a 22, almost 23 second duration on my actual chem cloud. And this is nice for the oxidizer chem launcher. Of course, with other skills, duration really isn't as effective as you might want. Now, there are some skills that definitely have a bigger impact with duration than others. You know, something like the traps or the turrets or the uh, the drones, those are definitely nice to have a good amount of duration on because obviously it just allows them to stay around longer. But for the most part, it's very unnecessary. For example, if you want to have a decoy up all the time, there's the mantis. I mean, you can just constantly, you know, throw out decoys. If you wanted to have your shrapnel trap or shock traps up pretty much all the time, you could always go with the, the rigor gear set. You know, if you're looking at turrets and drones, they have like three minutes of duration anyway because they buffed the shit out of it, you know, a bunch of patches back. So there's not even really use for those ones to have duration. When they didn't, when they were like 20 or 30 seconds as a base, then yeah, the duration was really good. Now, not so much. Of course, with the Defender drone, it can definitely be beneficial. Is it better than a lot of the other stats? I mean, if you don't really have much damage and you're using a defender drone yeah it's probably dicey whether you want to actually use it or not i mean you can still i think send it to another player but as far as a self buff yeah full-on yellow build with a defender drone it's not that impressive but i mean still maybe there's a use for a 40 second duration defender drone but again mostly what you're going to find this useful in is just the oxidizer chem launcher because i mean it's probably just one of the best slots for that skill if you actually wanted to use it defensively to stop incoming explosives. Now, this backpack is definitely lackluster, right? It is kind of like the dollar store version of the Memento backpack. I mean, I can't really say it's incredibly impressive because it is just a skill backpack with a bunch of little weird extras, right? I mean, you get skill haste, skill damage, you get a mod slot, you get an extra armor kit, you get three extra grenades, 25% ammo, um, repair skills and skill efficiency just kind of 
whatever. It's like a, it's like a kitchen sink. You know, they just kind of like throw everything in there. But then the main feature of it is that when you throw a grenade, you get a skill tier. And if you're at skill tier six, you get overcharge. But the overcharge only lasts 15 seconds, which means that for every minute of combat, you get 15 seconds of usable overcharge. And if you've actually looked at most of the skills, their overcharge is pretty much worthless, right? I mean, if you think about the actual builds that you're putting together, there's probably a lot more benefit from just putting, you know, a good damage talent on a normal high-end backpack or using just a good skill-based gear set backpack, right? There, there's a lot more, <laughs> you're going to get a lot more utility out of having a backpack or something that's up pretty much all the time rather than having something that's not active for three quarters of the time, right? So that's one of the reasons I don't like the backpack. And that's kind of one of the reasons I don't like overcharge. It's, it's a gimmick that isn't as powerful as it should be. And you can't really activate it as much as you generally would need. So that's something I, I generally frown upon with, with this backpack, but there are times when I really like it with the oxidizer because it gives it that huge radius. I mean, it definitely is nice to cover a huge swath of area to inflict maximum damage on a group of enemies, right? This ensures that any uh, explosive that's coming your way is going to get destroyed, you know, almost instantly. It is going to give you a huge field that basically prevents any hidden enemies from being able to like, you know, jump you from behind. I mean, it's, it's a nice feature. Of course, it does have its downsides. It's definitely on the weaker side against heavies. I mean, they can just walk through those clouds like they're nothing. And that's definitely something to be aware of. But it's also really good to hit enemies from who are like hiding from you behind cover. You know, it's just an easy way to get them to run out of cover or just sit there taking damage. You know, it, it's, it's not one of those skills that's going to be overly impressive. You're not going to be like, oh my God, this is just amazing but there are times when you use it and you're just like you know this, this feels good this feels like it's a good usable skill and again it's not going to have the domination that you know something like a a full-on status effect build will it's not going to have you know the immediate power as like a turret drone combo but i'm not going to lie being able to just you know destroy grenades being able to destroy remote cars being able to destroy the suicide drones all of those things are incredibly nice it is one of the few skills in the game that actually has a offensive defensive capability, right? That actually gives you that ability to kind of counteract certain things in the game. Most of them are just place here and do whatever, or, you know, just take immediate action and, you know, apply status effects to every enemy in the game. That's kind of boring. Yeah, it's fun to play for a little while, but that's part of the problem with the actual challenge of the game now. Most of the stats, most of the skills, most of the talents that are effective are effective because they're instantaneous they're immediately effective and that's all you have to worry about right you just put them down and forget about them or you shoot them and forget about them i mean that's it something like the chem launcher is fun because you have to actually think about where you're going to put it where you want it what enemies you're fighting if it's actually going to be beneficial you know if you are fighting against enemies that are constantly sending out these explosives then yeah this could be great because just having to deal with that stuff immediately coming at you is oftentimes annoying of course with a 20 second duration you definitely have to make sure that you're not walking into your own clouds because that can happen and end in embarrassment extremely quickly depending on what you know sort of talents or buffs you actually have active on your build but anyway i hope with their revamping of the game with some of the stuff that they're adjusting i definitely hope that they give new life to what skill duration actually can do in the game i hope they come up with a way to actually make overcharge a little bit more useful for you know non-gimmick based gameplay you know if you're not just lining up you know the five hunters and having everyone use the chem launcher on them with the uh, btsu overcharge for everyone you know, you know there's really not much use that you're going to get out of an overcharge mechanic i mean it's it's kind of one of those like one hit annoying wonders in the game where you know, like maybe once a battle you're going to get this full use out of it and after that it's kind of just like sitting there like okay i've got a full build dedicated to overcharge but i can only use it 15 seconds out of every minute you know so it's kind of like ugh. it's it's one of those yeah hopefully we get some we get some adjustment i would like for it to be more integrated in the actual you know gameplay um i would like it to have a, more of a 
I guess, dramatic impact that isn't so short term. Maybe it would be good if they just increased the skill tier system to go past tier six. So like, let's say you're using a, a skill build, full tier six skill build with like the card custom pistol and you've got uh, future perfect on it, meaning that you could theoretically gain four extra skill tiers. So you could go up to like skill tier 10. That, that would be cool. Uh, if they actually allowed like overcharge to just happen when you were above skill tier six, I think that could be very effective in the game. But yeah, I think there's quite a few ways that they could actually implement overcharge to be more effective in the game than just, you know, one trick pony every 15 seconds, you know, especially, you know, you have to actually use those skills while you're charging, while you're doing the overcharge thing, you know, it's, it's just, it's just a very annoying and kind of lame mechanic, to be honest with you. It was pretty much their attempt to like avoid having powerful skill builds. That's really what it was. But as we can see, it kind of failed because so many players want to be skill builds. So many players love skill builds, whether it's status effect, whether it's turret drone, whether it's just skill damage builds in general or explosive damage. You know, there's plenty of skill builds in this game and the thought process behind making overcharge is kind of like limiting the power of skill builds to, you know, a very small time frame. It failed, right? And it came back to bite them every time they try to nerf skill builds in this game. People want to be skill builds in the division because the division is in a large part featuring all these different skills that players want to use. So having these mechanics that just kind of seek to artificially limit them or, you know, don't really provide as much benefit as just using a regular damage talent, it's it's kind of silly, right? So hopefully they figure out a way to fix it. Hopefully they change up some of these things to just kind of make them better, make them more useful, make some of these uh, items just better in the game in general. And look, there's plenty of games that have duration based mechanics but what we see in a lot of these games is that you know sometimes this duration isn't necessarily just tied to a specific skill right like in the division obviously skill duration is only applied to certain aspects of skills but for example if duration if these duration buffs could actually be used to increase the the length that a talent was active so instead of having like a, a weapon talent that gives you you know like 10% amplified damage for 10 seconds. If you had a build with 100% extra duration on it, maybe those talents would give you 20 seconds of, of extra damage. You know, something like that. Make it more useful in the long term, right? Give you, you know, instead of having bonus armor for five seconds, maybe you have bonus armor for 10 seconds with 100% duration. You know, there's other ways that they could just go about it where this kind of mod would be more useful than it currently is in the game. But again, there's, you know, a lot of things in this game that I would fix or adjust that just, it's not gonna happen. Uh, most likely, just because the devs probably are, are extremely overwhelmed with what they have. They've got, you know, too small of a team to actually be doing everything that they probably would need or would like to do. So, I mean, it's just wishful thinking on my part. But it is something nice to point out just in case, maybe on the off chance, something does get fixed, something does get changed. Maybe there's just, maybe there's just a sliver of a possibility that the game in general gets improved in ways that we just, you know, aren't normally considering. But anyway... Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.